Okay, so we're moving through your story and we've heard about the foreclosures and the two-year house splits. Like, was there ever a point when you and Dana kind of changed your strategy financially? Like you quit doing the most cost-effective thing and like, when did you start doing what you wanted? So this chapter would be called Cheaper is Not Better. The answer is no but with some nuance. So at no point did we start going like, let's try to two year flip of $20 million house. Like, you know, the, the extreme never happened. So we never went to skip three steps. What we did though is, you know, somewhere in this kind of middle part of the journey realized, hey, the cheapest material and the cheapest contractor and things like that actually don't end up being the most cost effective because you're coming back and repairing and fixing and reworking things, even inside a two year flip sometimes. So you go to the tile store and you buy the cheapest ceramic tile you can because it's got a good look and it's lowering your cost and maximizing your margin until you realize that that tile cracks after six months uh, and the cheap grout didn't work and the cheap labor didn't do it well enough and all those things, right? At no point did we get to the place where we're like, okay, we've graduated from, you know, keeping costs low and we're just going to go to all these lavish things we want. So that's never happened to this date. But what did happen for sure, and I think is more important for most people that might be trying to, you know, mimic some of our progress is we did realize pretty quickly that the cheapest material, the cheapest vendor, and occasionally sometimes the cheapest property is not always the best investment. It's not always the best next step to keep us moving forward towards our goals and dreams. And that looks a lot like quality materials, not necessarily show place gaudy, like, you know, it's imported from Italy, but hey, we're gonna get the higher quality per foot tile or the better quality paint that will last and require less maintenance and, and redoing and uh, it'll last longer, those kind of things. I would say, you know, that's worthy of a whole kind of section of our journey is discovering that. I can remember in one of our first two year flip homes, we put um, granite tile countertops, which are doable. They're certainly less desirable, harder to keep clean and a lot more maintenance than a solid surface granite countertop. You know, another example of that would be engineered wood floors compared to a hardwood floor where the engineered wood floor cannot really be refinished. You have basically plywood with a wood veneer on top, cheaper to buy, but not a whole lot cheaper than a good entry level quality hardwood. So we did engineered the first few times and then we flipped. And, and also once you get into a certain price point, that's the expectation of the buyer. So, you know, once we got into some of the slightly larger homes and slightly nicer neighborhoods, we started putting in the true hardwood floor. And because of the selling point to that buyer was, hey, down the road, if trends change and you want a lighter stain or a darker stain, or you wanna do something different, this floor can be refinished. It's a true hardwood. Now, the difference in cost for us might've been maybe 20% on just the material because the labor was about the same. So, you know, the difference in, let's say you had a, you know, $5,000 wood flooring cost versus a 6,000. Well, you'd like to spend less, but the value of that long-term and the resale value was better. So we started doing some things like that where it wasn't always about cheaper is better. On our most recent big remodel, not including the current big build, we had to redo some things. So we were, we're still going through that transition on this last time. Uh, we put down some beautiful wood floors to use my last example, but we didn't invest as much in vapor barrier underneath the wood floors, big mistake. So this time we have double dipped on vapor barrier, roll on vapor barrier, lay down vapor barrier, extra thick slab, and then some really, really beautiful hardwood floors. So that's example there. Uh, to give you an example on paint, you know, it used to be the Home Depot or the Lowe's, you know, Bear or whatever this, you know, nicer, but store brand was. The last couple of times we've done a much nicer Sherwin Williams. And then this time we're going with a catalyzed coating, which is, you know, supposed to last a lot longer and be less, it's less likely to show wear and tear and weathering and things like that. So same thing for appliances, by the way. We bought refrigerators and they've gone out. We bought dishwashers and they've gone out. Um, so to level up a little bit to a higher quality product that has a higher front end cost, 
but will last a lot longer. So I'm not giving you a massive visual of like our next step forward as a couple or as a family from one home to the next year, but a step forward in mindset, a step forward in value, a step forward in the investment to create a greater return on the investment, both from a dollar's perspective, but also just a lifestyle perspective of, I'm not worried about what's gonna go out next, what's gonna break next. When do I need to repaint, restain, resand, reseal, that kind of thing on just everything in the house? Because the truth is, if you brought in a specialist to check out every part of your house every year, they would be telling you that you need to spend 40 hours a week just maintaining all the things, heating, air conditioning, countertops, floors, windows, doors, all these things. When in reality, if there's a little bit more thought put in and a little bit more investment put into the product and the material and the installation style early, you really can minimize a lot of that long-term maintenance and re-maintenance and work and rework and those kind of things. And for us, we've grown a lot in that. I wouldn't say we've reached you know, the pinnacle of anything, but by all means, we've been able to live in you know, nicer, fresher, lower demand homes. And we've been able to help a lot of our clients do that as well and friends. Um, so as we think about this project, just to point you back to kind of a home, a move for us, as we've been building what we really do think of as our dream home and our dream property on land in the city, one of my big thoughts has been invest now for the ease and joy of home ownership long term. So we use a lot more brick and a lot more stone and a lot less siding because that siding has got to be repainted. The brick and that stone shouldn't really need anything else in my lifetime as far as painting, sealing, install, any of that kind of thing. That siding is probably going to need to be painted every so often, right? So I minimized that. There were a lot of other things that we did in that regard. You know, what's the quality of the door locks, the hinges, the light switches, little things like that where before we would have said, Cheap, you know, good enough is good enough. Cheaper is better. We're going to sell it in a few years or we just want to save that money. Now we're thinking we're going to stay a while. Or if we were to sell, we want to sell to a, a high end buyer that values that and will pay for that value. So therefore, and, and just to add other things like fans, literally even light bulbs, trim, molding, things like that, where you're going, hey, I do not want to have to come back and fix that, replace that. I don't want to worry about that drying out and creating gaps. I want to buy the things, the materials that are already done that way. So that's a very long answer to a short question, but it also gives you kind of an insight into our growth as investors, as, owner, as owners, and those kind of leapfrog points forward to where we are or are about to be now in a home that we are trying at least to be unbelievably thoughtful. And one thing I would add is, you know, the idea of having a true architect or a designer was never worthy of consideration for us before. You know, we thought about it, but we never did it. I did all the drawings on grid paper myself, got city approval for all, every remodel we've ever done. The closest thing we ever came to a designer was some of our home stagers from our real estate business giving us a couple of ideas. This time we've had a full on architect, a full on builder and a designer, if not a couple along the way to help us make better decisions about material, about labor, about design, and about things that we want to avoid having to change or redo or pay for again later. So just some things to think about as you mimic our journey, or you may be ahead of us in that journey, but still learning and growing and doing that better. I will say, whatever we lacked in this video on specifics of showing you kind of that next home, that next thing, we're gonna make up for you on the next one. So make sure you check out this whole series. It's about to get really exciting.